So this is going to be a demo on how to use split cake paints with a one stroke paint technique to create roses and leaves and a little bit of foliage. So first up, public service announcement. Don't judge my gross nails. They're stained from the airbrush. And also don't judge my LOL surprise cup. So in your kit, you have the Meron Paradise uh, Fleur Split Cake. You've got a lovely big split cake paint, which has got pinks and greens on it, which is perfect for practicing this. I've only got these little dinky things, um, but I can still show you the same technique and the same effect. You'll need your square top brush from your kit and some type of skinny little fine detail brush, eyeliner brush, paint brush. If you're super into face painting and body art and you, you really like it, it's worth investing in some um, some nice paint brushes. Um, you can get those nice like rubber grip ones from the range and stuff. They're really good. But you'll need your brushes, which should, by the way, never be left in water, never stood up in water. When you're not using them, they should be left down so as not to absorb water and splay out the bristles and roll the glue so they are ready to go and you've got your split cake you can practice this on your makeup block your hair block on paper on your skin on your walls whatever floats your boat so the key to this is maintaining the right angles and loading your brush properly so i'm gonna Start by wetting my brush, which is not dripping. This is not dripping everywhere. I'm going to go into my split cake. So I'm going to go with this pink rosy one. And I'm going to just drag my brush back and forth. I feel that might be a little bit wet, so I might just blot it off. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth so that on both sides of this brush I've got an equal saturation of paint. So I'm going to show you this in like real time and then we'll break down the techniques so that you can see how you're going to do this. That's the beginning bit. So this is like an open rose. Little bud in the middle. I must say though, it is really hard to do it on paper and you waste a lot of paint. So if you can do it on your skin, you'll get such a nice blend from it that you won't when you're doing it on paper. So obviously the paper absorbs all the moisture. And do a bit of leafy decoration. skinny brush There we go. It's a really quick, effective way of just doing a quick, quick flower or rose. You can do leaves, foliage, tons of stuff with the same technique. 
So I want to break it down for you now so I can explain it in a little bit more detail um, what each of the steps are to create something like that. That's dead rough. You know, you can do this if you're a little bit more careful and slow. You can do this perfectly. Or if you want to do it super fast, you can cover large areas of the skin in a couple of minutes. So lots of different ways you can do it. This is how I was shown and how I've always done it. Load up that brush. Back and forth. And pick a corner. Pick your favourite corner. The dark or the light. I'm going to pick the light corner. And that is going to be my corner that's like stuck to the paper. So that corner is always going to say. I'm going to zoom in. It's always going to stay in the same spot. But the outer corner is going to pivot. And I'm just waving the brush a little bit as I do it. So that corner with the lighter shade stays in one place. And the outside I wiggle and move around. Like that. Always the darker colour on the outside. Always the lighter colour on the inside. Okay. So that could be a cute enough flower on its own. You could do the inside and you know put a little bit of yellow or something on the inside for pollen and call it a day but if you want to continue and do the rose you now need to do the rose bud so the rose bud is a tube shape so lay your brush sort of flat then go over to the bridge then you go back to the star and you put your brush in the same place as before but this time you go under the bridge and it creates a tube like that. Okay, so we do that in the middle, like so, and that becomes the center. Reload your brush, keep going back in and adding more paint and reloading. And then we can flick, go the other side, flick. Reload the brush, flick few more times down the bottom and that gives you your petals. I've got a slightly different brush. Still a square brush, it's just to make it quicker. I'm now going to go in with my greens. Loading up in the same way. Back and forth. And the leaves are really simple. Kind of a 90 degree angle with your brush. It's hard, I have to move my hand because you can't see. Ideally your brush would be at kind of 90 degrees, but I'll have to do mine this way. And you just wiggle, twist the brush and flick. And again, wiggle, twist the brush and flick and it makes a little leaf. If you want to do the stampy thing that I did, 90 degree angle, like that, and then you just simply stamp, 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 stamp. And you can do really cool foliage, feathers, anything like that. So I'm going to have a little go on my actual skin because obviously paper is going to absorb all that moisture. So you'll get a different effect on the skin to what you do on the actual paper. So let's have a little go. It doesn't just have to be pinks that you use. You could flip it around and use the green side. You can make your own split cake paints. You just cut slithers out of other body paints you've got and you can squash them together and create new combinations. Got a little rose there. 
might do a little rosebud next to it. So I'm just doing the centre part, not the other petals. So it looks like it's not quite opened yet. Just zoom out a little bit. Get my scabby tissue out of the way. Let's do some leaves. And this time, because I'm doing it on skin, I can use white to um, add my kind of detail as opposed to black. I wouldn't normally use black on the skin. Maybe even green. Might do a little bit of green actually first. And a little tip for um, body painting in general, but especially when you do something like this, don't overthink what you're doing, just let it happen. You know, the more you work this, the more you will lose the blend and the detail. So you need to be able to just be a bit more kind of organic and free with your brush strokes. Just let it kind of happen. If it goes a bit wrong, it goes a bit wrong. It's not the end of the world. This type of thing is not meant to look completely perfect. It's meant to be a little bit kind of sketchy or whatever. So that would look cute if we had a little bit of glitter on there. There's loads you could do. But I hope that that is a bit of a insight into the techniques that you need to do the one step rows or the one stroke rows. So remember, with that brush, pick the side that's always going to be in contact with the skin and you wiggle from there and you just pivot around and that side always stays in contact. When you're doing your centre part, 90 degree angle. Hang on, this is dry. Up and over. Start from the beginning, down and under. Make that little tube. Flick. Flick, flick, flick. And then eventually we'll end up with that. And that's it.